Hello, this is video 38. We're starting a new unit about work and energy. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about work. So I like to start this with a conceptual understanding of work because work is one of those things that's different in physics than what you think of it in your everyday life. So let's take a look here, just some illustrations to get some ideas. So the first illustration here, this person is pulling the bag to this initial distance here, and then the person pulls it twice the distance. So for your everyday understanding of the work, of the definition of work, you would say, okay, well, he's doing twice the work, right? Twice the distance is twice the work. So that agrees with our everyday notion of work. Let's take a look at the next one. Here, instead of lifting one bag, all the way up here, he lifts two bags up here. So he needs to apply twice the force because you've got twice the weight here. So you probably can say, okay, well, twice the force, that means twice the work. But now this is where it starts to kind of vary from what you think of what, what work is. So here, this lady has already lifted the weights above her head and now she's holding them stationary. Let's say she's holding them stationary for 20 minutes. In our everyday usage of the word, she's doing a lot of work to try to keep them up there. But for the physics definition of work, we'd actually have to say that she's not doing any work on these weights because the weights have not moved. So it doesn't matter how much force she's using, the weights are not moving, she's not doing any work on these weights. So let's keep going. Uh, your turn here. So if you push against a stationary brick wall for several minutes, do you do work on the wall, something else, or nothing at all? So it's like the woman holding the weights above her head. You can tell that this guy here is working very hard as he's pushing against the wall but he's not doing any work on the wall because the wall is not moving. So the object has to move in order for you to do work on it. So just because he's not doing any work on the wall doesn't mean he's not doing any work at all. Actually, he's doing work on his muscles. His muscles are moving, right? So if there's a force and there's something moving, then there's something, there's work being done on something. It's just not the wall, but it could be his muscles. So that would be the best answer. So this one is kind of tricky. And the whole point of this question is just for you to realize that if something, there's a force and something is moving, then work has been done on that moving parts of your object. So now we're ready for the definition of work. So here we have the work done by a constant force and it's the product of the component of the force in the direction of the motion times the distance through which the force acts. So what in the world does that mean? So we can look at this picture, it makes it a lot easier to understand. So this object here is being pulled by a diagonal force, but the object is moving to the right here. So what this definition of work says is that to find the amount of work done by this force on this object, we have to find this fx, this component of the force that is in the same direction, meaning parallel to the displacement. And then we just multiply the two together. So the point is that this diagonal force has a y component, fy, going straight up, but there's no motion vertically. So that means that we don't care about fy. fy is not doing any work on the block. The block is not moving vertically. So that's why we just care about fx, and this distance delta x. And really this delta x, we're just using it as a distance, not a displacement. Uh, work, when you multiply the x component of the force times that x distance, the work is actually a scalar. So we don't have to worry about the direction, um, just we don't have to worry about the fact that it's a vector. And work is also, the units is the joule. So we'll see that work has the same units as energy, which is gonna be a major topic here. 
So a note I have is that only the component of a force in a direction of the displacement is what's doing the work. So that's what I talked about, how Fy is not in the direction of the displacement, it's not doing any work. So let's take a look at an example. A man pushes a lawnmower on a level lawn with a constant force of 38 newtons. The force is directed down the lawnmower's handle and it makes an angle of 35. This theta here is 35 degrees. Calculate the amount of work he does on the lawnmower after he has pushed it 3 meters across the lawn. So there's a force being applied on the lawnmower and the lawnmower is moving to the right. So that means there's work being done on the lawnmower. So we have to find a force in the same direction as the motion. So to find the work, we're going to do fx delta x. Again, the x is simply just to show that they're both in the same direction. You could be having a motion vertical and a force vertical, that's fine too. So to find fx, it's going to be f cosine theta because that horizontal component is adjacent to the angle. You can see if there's a right angle here, f cosine theta is adjacent. So we can rewrite fx as f cosine theta times delta x. And now to find the work, we can plug in the numbers. So the force was 38 cosine 35 degrees, and the displacement that we're moving is 3 meters. So we're going to multiply all of this together, 38 cosine 35 times 3, and I got 93.4 joules. So that's the amount of work. So just to give you an idea of number, so around 100 joules, that is what a reasonable number is for pushing a lawnmower for 3 meters. So let's do one more question here in this video. So your turn to see if you understood the whole thing about the component of the force in the same direction as that motion. So a constant force is pulling a block across a horizontal surface as shown. So in the first picture it's pulling it horizontally and in the second picture at an angle. But these two forces have the same magnitude, they just have different directions. And the block is moving the same distance, so let's just assume the block is moving to the end of this little block here. So the same distance, the magnitude of the force is the same, but the direction is different. So which force does more work on the block? So your first instinct might be, well, if the force is the same and the delta x is the same for both, then the work on the box would be the same. But if we use our definition that it's only the component of the force in the same direction as that displacement that is doing the work. Well, in our first case here, in that horizontal force, all of that force is doing work because it's all in the x direction. However, in our second case, the x component, the fx here, is the only component that is doing work, that horizontal force. And we know from or work on the vectors that the component of a force is always going to be smaller than the force itself, right? Because the force of the hypotenuse and the component is just one of the sides. So that means that actually the force applied horizontally is going to do more work because the work done here is f times delta x, while in the second case the work is fx times delta x and fx is smaller than f. So just to recap for this video, we're, we just really talked about work. The object has to move in order for you to be doing work on it. And you have to find the component of the force that is in the same direction as the displacement. And when we mean the same direction, we just mean parallel. So we're going to do more on work in the next video.